My name is Claudette McGlynn, and I am Executive Director of the Center for the Study of Multicultural Children's Literature. I'm a member of the Pre-Conference Planning Committee, and I will be your panel moderator. We have assembled an outstanding panel of experts, six to be exact, to discuss the topic of literacy programming, forming partnership, and sharing resources, which is essential and timely. Dr. Alire mentioned in her talk, in terms of opportunities, she said we need to step up in developing library multicultural literacy programs and collecting more multicultural materials. So this is relevant, this is timely, and I'm going to have each person introduce themselves first. I'm Pat Mora. I'm Maureen Costello, Director of Teaching Tolerance. I'm Deborah Ford. I'm the Director of Library Outreach at Junior Library Guild. Idania Patterson, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, also a writer. I'm Amy Kuster. I'm the Youth and Family Program Coordinator at Skokie Public Library. Hi, I'm Michelle Leo. I'm the Head of Education and Library Marketing for Simon & Schuster. We have six mini presentations, and we are going to start with Pat Mora. Give her a hand while she there. When I started this, <laughs> I know that it is difficult after lunch to stay awake. Uh, and so I want you to take a deep breath and we have to rally. I mean, we're here not only to rally through this next session, but I feel like we're here together uh, to rally on behalf of all of America's children. And I have to say that those lightning presentations over lunch were outstanding, outstanding. <laughs> they made me feel I want to be part of this group, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's the power, I think, of, uh, of words and of text. Also, is Joanna in the room? No. Joanna, yeah. stand up. Joanna Eisen is going to sleep so well. <laughs> she has worked tirelessly, and I have known her thanks to Dia or, since she, you know, almost began at ALSC. And as I said to Amy, she is an utter joy to work with. So I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky. So this is Dia's full name: Children's Day Book Day, El Dia de los Niños, El Dia de los Libros. That is a mouthful. And that's why over time, it became known as Dia. So I was asked by, and don't be deceived by sweet Claudette McGlynn over here, she is a taskmaster. I mean, I would not misbehave in front of Miss Claudette. Uh, so we were asked to turn in three uh, speaking points. And I picked Zap, Zoom, and Zing, and I'm going to zip through them. <laughs> um, I mean, I, as, as some of you know, I am batty about words. But these are the, and this is all in a handout. This, these are really the journeys that I think I have made with um, Dia. But I wanted to begin with this. And this is not necessarily the good news, right? We need a diverse publishing system. System. This is from publishers to editors to marketing and publicity directors, book reviewers, award committees. Those are the biggies. And there are a lot of power relationships in those words. And we sometimes think it's poor taste to talk about power. And power is not easily shared. But that is the fact. 
You know, when I speak to audiences, I say, children's books, a business. And we have to realize that. You know, publishers make an investment, and they need a return on the investment. Beyond smiles, and beyond thank yous. And so we have to figure out a way together you know, because I begin with the assumption that we all deeply care about all of our children. That has not always been true in this country. And in our hearts, we know it. All books are multicultural books. It's just that in the history of this country, one group has been viewed as slightly better. And it's part of the system. But I, at the bottom, I have our partners. Many of you, but also I have the word families. And I think one of the things that um, Dia is very committed to is families as partners, not some families. Not families only who are regular library users who feel at home at libraries, but families who do not speak English and who find buildings like library buildings a bit intimidating. We need them as our partners, and that will only happen, busy as we are, if we reach out to them. And that's what I think DIA has been. It has been the bridge in. So there is a sort of a simple look at Pat, um, it is, uh, on the website, there is a, we had a, a history of Dia, and I say to audiences that people who know me know that I'm much less well-behaved than the person in that image. <laughs> but I was given the idea for Dia. I was at, and this is 19 years ago, I was at the campus of the University of Arizona, an institution with which I have no connection. I was there to talk about poetry, and someone mentioned to me, that in Mexico, April 30th, is El Dia del Niño. I'm from the border, and I found that, you know, okay, that sounds like a good idea, Children's Day. I walked out of the building, <clears throat> and um, it was a sunny day in Arizona, and I thought, well, we ought to have that. You know, we ought to have a Children's Day. But it was early in my writing career, and I felt it essential that we connect it with literacy. So Children's Day, celebrating children, I'm not going to skip over that, Children's Day, Book Day. All right, my first organizational partners were Reforma and ALSC. They have been outstanding partners. The challenge of advocacy, I have been a pest. I have annoyed many people. And years ago, I heard a wonderful Asian American poet say, diversity work is heartbreaking work. And it is. It is. Because if you're really doing it in ways that you're almost embarrassing yourself, you know? Um, It's uphill all the way. So for 19 years, I have made calls that people didn't answer, written emails that people didn't answer, you know, had people look the other way, uh, and that's just been the reality of DIA. I do want to mention this. I want to talk about the power of books and the power of editors. There's an editor. She's no longer an editor. She still loves children's books. She felt convinced there should be a book about Dia. It would not have existed without her. She's happy doing what she's doing. It is a loss that she is not an editor, and it is part of what we're talking about today. So I'm very, very grateful to ALSC for helping with sharing book joy. It is a privilege and an honor for all of us to be part of growing a nation of readers. If we don't have a nation of readers, we will not have democracy. And I believe that. So we need to be passionate about this 
and passionate working together.